Hello guys, today I want to show you a tool that came in handy on our server, it's called Frame Protect, and basically it, it allows players to protect their item frames from griefing. And I was kind of disappointed that Townie and LWC don't really have these features already built in. I know the developers have kind of talked about adding them, but um, I didn't really feel like waiting. So there is a plugin that's super light that, that has this functionality. And um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to install it and set it up. So the first thing you want to do is um, just search for Frame Protect. And let's go to the main page on Bucket. And in here we want to go to download the most recent version so I'm going to do that and you can read the change log if you want I'm going to go ahead and just download and save this to my desktop so now that I have the file I have my test server open here on the right and this is just a fresh bucket server so I'm going to go to the plugins folder and I'm going to drag in frame protect and you want to run the server once so that you can get the mod installed. And once it's done, go ahead and just type in stop into the console and close out of that. So now in here we have the frame protect config files. And um, since it's already English by default, we don't really need to modify the language.yml. Also, we have the config.yml. So this is where we're going to be actually configuring the settings for the plugin. The first option we have here is for the language. And um, by default, it's in EN for English. But on the developer's page, they say that you can also use DE for German, NL for Dutch, and HU for Hungarian. Or you can set up a custom one if you want. Next, we have the disable console messages. Um, that's set to false by default, and I recommend keeping it that way. Uh, that just makes sure that you have all messages from the plugin showing up on your bucket console. Um, and then you have next disable, disable create and destroy messages. And that's also set to false by default because that's what tells players when they've created a protected item frame. So you do not want that to be disabled. So next we have the disable create and destroy messages and disable not yours message. And they're false by default because that's how the plugin interacts with players so you, you want people to be able to see when something is um, being protected or when they're uh, interacting with something that's not owned by them but is protected disable natural breaking basically means uh, when there is no block behind a frame uh, does the frame get destroyed and the uh, by default it's set to false because if it's set to true then if you tear down a building that's full of item frames, the item frames are going to be floating in the air. But if you want that feature, you can set it to true. Disable breaking by mobs, that's pretty self-explanatory. Protect blocks, that's set to true. That means that uh, if somebody protects a frame, the block that it's on is also protected. That way somebody can't really exploit the system by breaking the block and therefore uh, breaking the frame. Then you have the option to stop block placing over frames, that's set to true. That's pretty much uh, the default in Minecraft anyway but you can disable that if you want. And then you have your database setting. So if you want to set up a database on your web server, you can, and you can put in the info here and uh, log all the info to that. And then we have, do not change this, it's false. So I'm guessing we shouldn't change that. The last setting is reset the database. And that's basically for this database that if you've set up up here, if you want on your next server startup uh, for the database to be basically set to nothing, and to start collecting data from scratch, you can set that to true. And just make sure you set it back to false after you've done that, otherwise it's just gonna keep deleting everything in the database every time the server restarts. Okay, so now we're gonna have a look at the commands and the permissions for Frame Protect. So I'm gonna go ahead and log into my local test server that we've just created. And um, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm opt right now, so what's gonna happen is I'm gonna create a frame and it's automatically going to be protected. Now, if um, I had set up the permissions nodes, what I would do is I would set it up so that so that the first permission node, which states frame protect .auto protect star, I would set that up to either have all the players or none of the players to have that permission node, depending on uh, whether people wanted to have 
automatic frame protecting or if they wanted to do it themselves. Uh, on our server we have it set so that uh, you have to do it manually. Then the second node we have is frameprotect.protect.star and the command for that is .fp protect. And basically what that does is it lets you create a protected item frame and you would just right click, which I just did, and of course since this one's already protected, it's telling me that. Um, and the node is just to let people use that command. Uh, the next node is frameprotect.protect.star and that just lets you use the fp remove command and there you go. Now this frame is not protected. So if I want to do protect again, I can click that and now the frame is protected again. The next node we have is frameprotect.place.star and there's no command for that, that just allows players to place or destroy item frames and paintings. Next is frameprotect.info.star and we just can go ahead and type in oops, slash fp info and boom it tells me bad touch 3 is the owner of this item frame um, next we have frame protect dot ignore creative that just basically says whether or not creative players can interact with um, with item frames then you have frame protect dot admin which gives all permissions to a player and also gives them the uh, ability to destroy any item frame or painting uh, frame protect dot admin also gives the ability to use these three commands which can change the language um, change the owner of a frame or painting or reload the config.yml file which basically means that the server reloads the settings based on what's in the config file so if you're editing the config file while the server is running you just hit this command and it'll apply those settings instead of having to restart the server so yeah that's a look at the frame protect plugin uh, if there's anything you guys have any questions about or anything that I missed, please feel free to let me know. And if there's any plugins that you guys want me to go over, uh, please just send me a message and I'd be happy to do a video on it. So, alright, as always, take care guys.